Welcome to the Freelance Musician Podcast, the podcast to encourage, inspire and support you on your freelance journey. I'm your host, Hannah Mitchell Harrison. Hi, and welcome to episode number two of the Freelance Musician Podcast. Today I'm chatting to professional violinist and businesswoman Hazel Ross, who since graduating from the Royal Northern College of Music has built a hugely successful portfolio career made up of performing, inclusive of solo, chamber and orchestral work, as well as creating and managing shows that have been performed all over the world. She is also a passionate music educator and consultant. In this interview, we chat about what it takes to build a successful career from the ground up whether there is some snobbery in the classical world when it comes to freelancing, and how she is approaching this uncertain season of COVID-19. I cannot tell you how excited I am to bring this interview to you. It is full of golden advice and inspiration for freelancers. Now, the sound is a little glitchy in places, and we had a few connection issues, but stick with it, because if you are thinking about a career as a freelance musician, you need to listen to this. And even if you've been freelancing for a while, there are still things that you can learn here. So enough from me, let's get straight to it. Hi Hazel, thank you so much for joining us um, today here on the Freelance Musician Podcast. Really excited to have you as a guest. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks for inviting me, Hannah. It's great to be here as well. So thank you. Um, Okay, so let's get stuck in. Um, We're going to talk about your whole career and how you've built that up but maybe first of all could you give us a little bit of info on your background how you got into music why the violin all that kind of thing yeah so I mean I came from a very musical family so it was always around me actually um I had both my big brothers they were playing music when I was growing up and I I know I was supposed to start playing the piano but I always wanted to play the violin um, my mum had a violin in the house and I always used to sort of sneak up to, <laughs> to the room where the violin was and play it whenever I could. And so in the end, I got my violin lessons. Um, and that was the start of it, really. Um, I probably started playing violin when I was about six or seven. Yeah. Um, but I was also a really keen singer. So it wasn't really until I was 18 and I had to decide what I wanted to do with my music, whether I wanted to go to university or whether I wanted to go to music college. Mm. Um, that I really made a firm decision between the violin and singing Um, and in the end I I went for the violin and the rest is history really so yeah so that's how it all started for me yeah amazing and does does anyone else in your family play the violin or was it just you kind of were drawn to the sound of it like why the violin yeah my my one of my brothers played the violin um and he's actually he then decided to continue to be an organist um so he did a slight <laughs> change and funnily enough my mum uh, my mum's a singer and I think that I wanted to probably do something a bit different because yeah. I think growing up everybody thought I was going to be a singer like my yeah. mum so I was like no <laughs> I'm not going to be that <laughs> so I think probably there's a little bit of stubbornness in there as well yeah. just because it yeah I, I, there was no pressure really um with the violin but yeah. I did I did love it and I love the sociable aspect of mm-hmm. playing, playing the violin too. And yeah, I, I thought that once I went to college, so I went to the Royal Northern, um, I always thought that if I went as a violinist, I could always do a postgraduate as a singer, but I wouldn't okay. be able to do it the other way around. Right. So that was another thing behind my decision. Yeah. But then once I started um, getting work as a violinist, I didn't have time no. to carry on with my singing anyway. So, so that sort of fell by the wayside and that's yeah. fine. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, can't, you can't, you can't do two things to a really high, high level. No. And um, yeah. And the violin, the violin one. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I totally relate to that because um, my mum has a piano school. And so the expectation uh-huh. was that I would go on, you know, to be a pianist and um, a flute was my second instrument. So I got to uni and um, there was this decision, do I go with, with the piano or the flute? And I wanted to prove that I, you know, there was more to me than just playing the piano. Same with you, that bit of stubbornness, but the piano one yeah. in the end. But I can totally relate to that one into like um, be your own person and not just um, exactly follow everyone else's expectations. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think that's definitely something that I've probably done throughout my career. Um, is I think there's that sort of core in me um, that says, you know, you've got to find your own way. Yeah. And also, I think a lot of the work I now do as a violinist is definitely tied to my singing. I think that side, okay. that singer side of me, mm-hmm. um, 
I I've managed to express by by being a violinist. So yeah. in some ways they are still very much interconnected. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. So when you left college, did you have like a set goal of what you wanted to do or were you just kind of figuring different things out as you went along? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I did have a fixed goal, um, actually. I really wanted to be in an orchestra. Okay. Um, and looking back though, the reason I wanted to do that is I think that's because that's what I was told that I was yeah. going to do. Yeah. So I didn't really give it that much thought. Mm -hmm. It was just the expected pathway. Um, yeah. I've always loved chamber music and that's mm -hmm. been a big part of what I did. But also I realised that it probably wasn't going to be a full-time career as a chamber musician just yeah. because of the nature of the responsibility to the other players and the group. And, um, and I, I don't know. I was literally, I think when you go to music college, I mean, it was a while ago and I think actually things have changed, mm -hmm. but it was very much, you're going to be an orchestral musician, you're yeah. going to be a soloist, mm -hmm. you're going to be a teacher, <laughs> that sort yeah. of, yeah. those boxes. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just was, was told that, you know, I was going to do my four years, maybe do a postgrad year where I'd start auditioning, start doing extra work with orchestras, mm -hmm. then audition for a job. And, and, you know, if I was lucky, that was going to be my future. And, and um, yeah, it went that was the plan for a bit and then I realized quite quickly that actually that wasn't what I really wanted to do so, yeah yeah what made so what made you realize that why why did it seem not to be the right path? Uh, I think I think that it's really alluring to say that you play with a specific orchestra mm -hmm. yeah because you can quantify what you do as yeah. a musician yeah. and people immediately just say oh well she plays with the Halle Orchestra or she for, for example yeah and I just found that that was great but the reality of it for me didn't excite me and I I felt that it didn't excite a lot of my colleagues either and I found that I don't know it, I don't want to say depressing but it definitely wasn't I just didn't feel like it was exactly where I really belonged mm -hmm. full time yeah um, I loved my work and I still do love my work with uh, orchestras yeah. and I still dance with um chamber orchestras and symphony orchestras mm. I definitely wouldn't want to be without it but yeah. for me there was just something that was missing yeah. and I I think I wanted my own voice as well and to just really explore what's out there mm -hmm. and also, as you know, I forget this myself, um, if I'm honest, a massive factor is the fact that I broke my wrist in my oh, really? final, yeah, at, yeah. Like, in my postgrad year. Yeah. Um, so everything was set up. Yeah. And then that happened and I had to take a, a year out, actually. And oh, in okay. that year, I had to look at other opportunities and I had yeah. to start looking outside the box. Yeah. Um, and... By, be, by being forced into that situation, it opened up a lot of doors for me. Yeah. And then, and I realised actually, you don't just have to follow this set path. Mm -hmm. there, there are other opportunities out there. And also breaking my wrist actually made me realise I really wanted to play. Like I had to get better and I had yeah. to get it fixed because yeah. it was really something that was burning in me to be a mm -hmm. performer. So, and it's interesting now I forget that because at the time it was absolutely catastrophic, but yeah. it was definitely one of the best things that sort of happened in a way in terms of sort of redefining my career. And I think I'm in a much happier place now than I would have been otherwise. Yeah, it's definitely interesting when you look back and look at events and you think like at the time that was really awful, but actually it was like key to pointing you in the right direction. Um, and I'm sure lots of people can see that. I know I kind of look back and think, oh, that at the time that was like just the worst thing. But actually, looking back, it was the best thing because it put me on the path now um, that has been the best for me. Um, yeah. And exactly. when, um, so talking about this idea when you leave college that you have, it's, you know, it's either orchestral work or teaching or this, mm -hmm. um, do you think there's a sort of, um, that people, have a lower opinion of sort of a general freelance career do you think there's that sort of snobbery about it oh okay so this is a difficult one um <laughs> i don't know i think that that worried me for many yeah. years and it held me back and yeah. i'm definitely worried that people had a lower opinion of it yeah i don't know whether they do mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know. I, I think people in the know, I think musicians who know how hard a freelance career is yeah. to really make it successful mm -hmm. don't. But yeah, I definitely feel that there is that attitude to that, oh, you freelance because you can get a job. Yeah, yeah. I do feel that. And I suppose I must feel that because I will often say, this was a choice. <laughs> you know, I realised yeah. actually that I didn't want a job. Yeah. And realising I didn't want a job was the most liberating thing for me. Mm -hmm. I, I, remember, I, I remember the audition really clearly. And I remember walking out of a specific audition just thinking, I'm never going to audition for anything again yeah. because I don't want the job I'm auditioning for. Yeah. So why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want, I don't want this. Yeah. And I never really gone through that freedom of thought before. I just done, I just had done it. Before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I, what I would say to people going into the industry now who feel the same, possibly there's some sort of snobbery, but that mm. is all it is. Yeah. And actually, if you can overcome that, and be true to yourself you're going to be much much happier in the long term and if you make it work for you um then people w will really think a lot of that and mm -hmm. i know that a lot of my friends in the um in the orchestral world when i when i left manchester and uh, i moved to london and i set up my, my duo which has been touring for for several years and i'm just like hazel first of all you're mad because what are you going to do in London? Yeah. Um, you know, you, you don't have contacts in London. Why would you leave Manchester when everything is so well set up for you mm. here? And also, like, what are you going to do with this duo? And, and I think some people even said I was selling out. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, a, a good friend of mine said that. She's still a good friend. And she's the first <laughs> person now who says to me, I can't believe I said that. All really? Ago. Like, yeah. That was really st stupid thing to do because actually yeah. I was doing the opposite it as far as I was concerned I was I was actually following what I was really passionate about yeah whereas to me staying in a job which gave me security that would have been selling out yeah for me so yeah I yes there possibly is a bit of snobbery there um mm. but be true to yourself yeah um, definitely. yeah that's such good advice and I mean we spend so much time worrying what everybody else thinks about what we're doing and actually half the time they're not thinking at all <laughs> they're just thinking about what they're doing I and this is so yeah. true, Hannah. Pe yeah. People don't think about other people all the time. No, <laughs> <laughs> and I I know that I I sometimes tie myself in knots. So if, for example, if I'm examining, then I think you know, should I be a classical orchestral musician, or should yeah. I be and um, the musician with my duo who's been here, or should I talk about this gig I did with this yeah. band here? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like whichever one has as people assume different things yeah. about you. Yeah. And then depending on what world I'm in, so if I'm in the more sort of commercial world, if I mention in the orchestral, they think I'm stuck up. Yeah. If I'm in the orchestral world and I mention anything about touring with such and such, and they yeah. think that I'm I'm no good. Yeah. So and I say, like, I mean, you know, you just have to get over it and yeah. actually <laughs> just just be who you are. But I definitely do wear a lot of different hats. Tell us, tell us about all the different things that you do, how you've kind of built up your freelance career. What's it made up of? Okay, so it's made up of um, several creative projects, which mm -hmm. I've set up myself. Um, and I set those up as a, I suppose as a reaction to, to orchestral playing. It wasn't that, but I could see that, I could see that people were talking all the time that audiences were going down mm -hmm. in the classical music world. Yeah. And from my point of view, we would, we kept doing the same thing again, over and over again and expecting audiences to come back. Yeah. And I, was, I just thought, you know, if we really want to reach these audiences, we need to do something different. Mm -hmm. And that's what encouraged me to go down the more creative route and find something that was different and find a way I could meet and reach audiences who thought they didn't like classical music. I could relate to them. They could relate to what I was doing. And then we can actually entice them back into big concert halls that way. Yeah. Um, so that's a big part of what, what I do. Um, and in over the years, that's actually turned into quite a, quite a big business, I suppose. Uh, totally accidental. But if someone had said when I was at music college that I'd end up running a business, I, I would never have believed them or thought I was ever able to do something like that. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a big part of what I do. Um, I still freelance um, orchestrally, although mainly it's with shows, which is where my heart is. So yeah. I love I love my touring shows. Um, I love the West End. Anything like that um, is sort of really. Um, I, I say that's where my heart really is playing. Um, mm. And 
I do, I still do a fair bit of chamber music and a lot of solo performance. So that's sort of my performing aspect of what I do. Yeah. And then uh, music education has always been a huge driver for me. Um, I'm absolutely passionate about uh, teacher development. And this is an area I'm moving more and more into. Mm-hmm. Um, so the teaching, teacher development, and also my work with the ABRSM as an examiner. Yeah. So, well, especially before all of this happened, um, I was incredibly busy. I, yeah. I love my work's international, so I'd be flying back and forwards all the time. Mm-hmm. And then teaching on the one day I was at home a week um, and sort of, trying to not let my pupils know that the day before I was in America and I'd just come back. <laughs> so <laughs> it's sort of that, um, it's just, it was just balancing everything and examining and, but you know, it, it, it's busy and it, it's hard to juggle it, but it, it's really worthwhile. Yeah. And, you know, it makes me feel very fulfilled as, yeah. as, a, as a musician and a teacher and you can do everything. You can yeah. do all these things if you, if, if you want to, but you've got to want to do it. Yeah, um, definitely. So yeah, I think that's um, that probably sums up what I do. Um, yeah, as, can you um, tell us more about your? So you mentioned your creative projects, and I know you've talked about mm-hmm. your duo. Um, sort of how how did that happen? And tell us more about like what your duo has done, um, that kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. So I set up um, Electra. It's called. Um, I set it up say fifteen years ago. Um, the point of it was just to do something different um, and not be part of a section and really I just had an idea yeah um, and I met somebody at a party and I was telling them about this idea uh, I didn't have a plan it was just <laughs> an idea but I was I, I was very enthusiastic about it obviously and um, they gave me their card no she asked for my card and I just thought well you're never fine I didn't ever expect anyone to phone me yeah and she phoned me a week later and she offered me a contract um for a week to do two shows with this duo which I which didn't had even <laughs> amazing <laughs> <No. yeah. laughs> so I was like I was on the phone I was like oh yes sure no problem. <laughs> and she was like oh, we need two 45 minute shows they have to be from memory they have to be scored for a nine piece band so, yeah 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 that's fine <laughs> brilliant <laughs> put down the phone I was like okay now what I don't even yeah. have a duo partner yeah um and then I contacted my friend who she was my desk partner in the orchestra she'd been thinking along the same lines funnily enough it was yeah. a very strange coincidental thing yeah. but she wanted to get more down the corporate route I wanted to go more down the concert hall performing route yeah and that, that combination of the two of us was really successful actually yeah because we really balanced and we had about two months to put a show together um so I asked my friend at the time to do the, the arrangements mm-hmm. we put together two 45 minute shows she was in London I was in Manchester so we were just driving between the two yeah, places <laughs> rehearsing memorizing um working out the staging because it's, it's it's a, a staged show yeah um, and all the talking so it's also very interactive yeah. yeah and then we went and did it um and yeah uh, it went really well. Apparently, well, the audience thought it went really well. I mean, looking, <laughs> looking back now to where we are now to then, I mean, I don't even want to think about that first show. Yeah. But there was an agent in the audience. We didn't know that. And then they phoned and they they wanted us on their books. Um, and it, it really went from there. Yeah. And then it's grown from being just the two of us to now there's eight of us. Yeah. And often we're in different countries all at the same time um, yeah. to cover the workload. So it just over the years it's grown and grown and grown yeah um and it's great you know i still love it um and you know it, it, i love it because we re- we're reaching people and we're yeah. really t- taking them on this journey with us and really changing those preconceptions that exist about classical music um, yeah. and that means a lot to me to be able mm-hmm. to do that so yeah yeah and it's so exciting to think that like something so big came out of a conversation at a party when you didn't even have it it was just an idea and it just goes to show how um it's so important to to be talking about your ideas and you know the contact could be anywhere I guess it's the importance of networking um and not hiding yourself away you need to be getting to know people get to know as many people as you can because you just don't know who you're going to meet you don't know and just to be really open-minded and I would say this to any musician that you never know what opportunities are going to lead to the next Mm -hmm. one so never sort of think 
I don't know just always be open to opportunity I mean yeah. I'm actually I'm actually a terrible networker I hate, <laughs> me too <laughs> I hate it I, I hate talking to people about what I'm doing about what I want to do and I don't think I've ever asked for work in my life I, mm-hmm. I, I literally it makes me um yeah as most musicians the thought yeah is definitely um I don't think that's the best way to be so <laughs> I, d- I think don't be like me in that <laughs> what I had I wasn't trying to network I was just talking to someone and yeah. I was passionate about what I wanted yeah. to do and I think if you really believe something in the way I did and I still do mm. then people listen you know and yeah. that, that was all it was she just saw somebody who was really passionate who had an idea and yeah. I just wanted to share my idea but mm-hmm. I wasn't asking for work in no. that in that in that way but I think you know if you believe in something don't be scared to don't be scared to 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 give it a go yeah because you know think obviously be sensible and think about what what have I got to lose yeah exactly And once you've you know if if it's okay I mean with with Electra I I think I had like all the savings I had when I left college which really weren't a lot Mm -hmm. um and I just poured all of them into it because I knew I had this contract so yeah. I, I thought well at least it will pay you know for the music to be written yeah. for example yeah. so I literally poured everything I had into it yeah. because I I, I I could I probably mm-hmm. wouldn't be so blasé now yeah um and that's how it started so I took I, you have to take a risk definitely and you have to not be worried about it not working out I mean yeah. a lot of projects don't work out and that's fine because mm-hmm. you learn from those yeah, hundred percent you've, you've I mean what's the worst that you can do like you say you have to be sensible and look at all the the elements and you know the, the risk involved but at the end of the day you just have to try don't you and also yeah. um not be afraid to invest in yourself um mm-hmm. because I think often certainly when you first leave college and you know money is tight naturally you don't want to spend any money but often to get projects off the ground um and to kind of get ahead you do have to invest in yourself um you do a little bit and you don't want you know shouldn't be too afraid to do that because yeah the return if it's worth it is going to be much greater so it's trying to I agree balance and I obviously think like it's you some people might disagree with me but I I haven't really ever asked too many favors and Mm -hmm. I I would really advise that as well you know Mm. things do cost money to set up yeah so if you can find that um that's great but I, I find that if you ask people to do things for free too much, you can't rely on it and it, it, it can muddy the waters sometimes mm-hmm. as well. So I think you need to be a bit careful to, you know, don't, don't be scared to invest yep. if you can um, yeah. and be as self-sufficient as you can. And mm-hmm. I think that's definitely something that I've, I've probably learned as well. And, you know, I, I would probably be advised where possible. It's not always possible. No, just, yeah, I think it's, yeah, don't be scared to invest in yourself, exactly what you're saying, because yeah. it will pay off in the end. Definitely, yeah, such good advice. So, um, so you've talked about that you've got all these different kind of threads to your career. Um, so how do you manage all that in terms of sort of <laughs> work-life balance? Is there such a thing as work-life balance? Like, <laughs> oh, well, there is at the moment. Well, actually, <laughs> well. it's gone the other way now. But, um, oh, how do I manage it? Okay, um... Oh, it look it's difficult mm. um i i really think that you know being a freelance musician depending what that means to you but what it means to me is a lot of very hard work and it it takes a lot of time and you do have to make a lot of sacrifices so for me i mean you know anyone looking at my facebook page and instagram um like my life looks like the most glamorous exciting yeah. life <laughs> like i'm in this country i'm in this country i'm on this stage i'm doing yeah. this But actually, you know, the reality is that I'm often on my own and I'm on stage for 45 minutes. That's amazing. But then I'm in a hotel room on my own. Um, This is similar to examining as well. We're often with great colleagues, but there's a lot of time, you know, your your family's not there. And, but it has to be worth it, you know? Mm. And and to me, I have managed to balance it really well. Um, You know, often my husband will come with me if he can, or then when I am at home, that is just really quality valuable time and I think for me over the years it's learning to say no yes you know just you can't do everything Mm -hmm. and it's I I think for me especially actually if an orchestra rings I often feel like I have to say yes because Mm -hmm. I think that's still in my head yeah oh it's this orchestra I have to say yeah (laughs) actually I'm just like do I though I mean it's I don't know a hundred and whatever pounds I've got to drive to the other side of the country I'm going to get back at two o'clock in the morning 
do I need to say yes mm-hmm. to this mm-hmm. or do I need to be at home and address that balance and I'm definitely yep. a lot better at that and something I used to do is look at sort of how much I needed to earn in a month yeah yeah and then once I'd earned that or I knew that I, I could earn that then I'll be like okay I can start saying no now mm-hmm. so anything now I, I want to do I've got to really want to do it and, and yeah. the payoff's really got to be worth mm-hmm. it but you know I, I am careful and definitely since I got married you know um that's a you know it's a real priority and you have yeah. to look after that too yeah um, you can but it's not it's not always easy um but I think my husband always says like that it's like a dial so sometimes I'm teaching more and I'm at home and sometimes I'm playing more sometimes I'm examining more and then it, it swings all the time yeah. sometimes I'm at, I'll, I'll be at home for two weeks and sometimes I'll be away for two weeks but mm-hmm. you just keep balancing all the time and we do have that freedom that's a great yeah. thing you know yeah, it's definitely one of the perks. And you're right. Um, I think as a freelancer, you just have to accept that you're never going to have um, a regular routine through the year. You know, there'll be busy periods where, yes, you are away more. And then there'll be quieter periods where you're home more. And so overall, it's possible to balance it out. Um, but exactly. it's just accepting that you don't have a like a schedule as such or a routine mm-hmm. as you might do in a traditional nine to five. But like you say, that's part of the the fun of it is the, the freedom that you have that comes along with that so I think it's definitely exactly. worth it um, and worth all the hard work and the effort um, yeah. yeah so I know you've got some kind of recent projects you've been working on um, I, I so you talked about your um, charity and chilling things do you want to tell us a little bit about those kind of yeah of course projects? I will so it's, it's interesting actually because I know um sort of suddenly to think like have I ever thought about giving up being a musician and I think this is one thing that always um keeps driving me forward because if ever I get that kernel of Mm -hmm. you know then then I'll quite quickly think okay what do I want to be doing what do I need to do to change this situation and which is why I haven't ever felt like giving up I don't think yeah but yeah I um I started a uh an it's called an executive graduate certificate last year on something called the global leaders program and that's um I've been working with 45 musicians from around the world um, and this program is it's like a, an MBA um, so it gives you the business tools as a musician mm-hmm. um, but to really focus on social projects, um, community development, um, cultural agency and it's we, we met in Chile um, in January and I was working on a project um, in a place called Coronalawi in Chile and I was really there just to, to be working with the, the students and the teachers for a week. But to be honest, I, I couldn't really just leave it when, when we <laughs> ended. Um, so since then, myself and the other two people I, I was with, so um, they're both in America, I'm in England. We've um, been really working to develop this project there and mm-hmm. to find a way to, um, to really give these children opportunities and the whole community opportunities um, mm. beyond the orchestra. So whilst the orchestra is fantastic, what's going to happen to them after the orchestra? At the moment, there's no set pathway to further education. Mm-hmm. There's no real employment opportunities in the town. So we've been working with the community to create um, to create a an organisation which is going to provide them with these these future opportunities. And it's been incredible. I mean, I've yeah. loved every minute of it. It's been really hard. It's really hard because we're working, I'm in England, the project's in Chile, my colleagues mm-hmm. are in America. Um, and just getting that local understanding um, and communication um, has been a real challenge, but I've just loved it. And it again, it just makes you realise how incredible music is. And yeah. the, the huge power music can have and mm-hmm. really can have such a huge impact on people's lives. Yeah. And I think, you know, working in England and as I work in England, they've got everything they want. Mm-hmm. I mean, not all schools compared to the, the school I, I work with here, going to Chile and meeting these children who have literally nothing and they sharing instruments, yeah. but their dedication yeah. is amazing. And what they can achieve is just in, incredible. I, I could not believe the standard mm-hmm. of music they, they were, they were producing and, yeah so so yeah we've dedicated um uh the last six months to working on this project um actually there's just been an article written about it which is really exciting it's just been published Um, where where would we find the article it's in the world ensemble magazine okay so yeah you can have a read yeah (laughs) and um yeah and we're continuing our work with them into the future Mm. obviously it's hard at the moment because you know funding sources are, are limited yeah but it's been really exciting um 
And another project I'm involved in is working um, in teacher development in communities where they've got really limited resources. Mm -hmm. So I'm running online teacher development programs with those people, um, really sort of uniquely tailored to their circumstances mm -hmm. to provide them the best tools to really re reach their goals um, yeah. themselves without always having external artists coming in. So that's another project that I'm currently working on. Yeah, it's so lovely to do something like that and be able to give back because I think um, as freelancers, naturally, we get so caught up in like what we're doing and finding work and, you know, it's, it's quite hard at times and it's easy to become disheartened and think, oh, you know, why mm -hmm. am I even a musician? But then you do something like yeah. that and you realise the power of music um, yeah. and it, it kind of, I guess, um, gives you a renewed sense of energy then for you know it really does i mean i'm in a completely different place as a musician as a teacher as mm -hmm. a, a businesswoman but i'm not businesswoman but you know i mean running a business now than i wasn't last year yeah and you, you just never know when you can learn even more and even more yeah you know exactly. um and yeah it's, it's been really really great again this is an investment i haven't you know it's an investment into myself yeah. but actually now the things that are happening because of that you know that they lead on they lead yeah. on things you know yeah. so yeah it's really important to do that i think yeah 100 percent, definitely um and you say you're not a businesswoman but you totally are <laughs> and i think often that's where we go wrong as musicians is we don't think of our career as a business um yeah you know it's sort of something that's our hobby that we're making money out of but I think you need to see your whole career path as a business mm. and approach it in that mindset. Yeah, I, Hannah, what you just said was so right. It's not a hobby that we're making money from. No. I would honestly say that I have two heads on me. There's mm. the music I love playing. Well, I love, you know, I'm connected to all of it. Yeah. But I, I love playing, you know, I would, the Mendelssohn Octet with my friends in a yeah. concert where my it's not going to earn me any money, mm. but I, I need that side of yeah. it. But actually these other aspects of my career, if I go away for a week with my duo, if I'm running that business, mm. I've created another show, which I tour with, um, that, that, that's well paid. So yeah. then I can sit and I can play this mm. with my friends here. And it doesn't yeah. matter if there's three people in the audience, it doesn't matter because yeah. I know that I've got these income streams coming in mm -hmm. and it's all about just diversity of income streams. hundred percent. Um, yeah. and definitely, then you still love music because yeah. it is your hobby and it is your job. But I yeah. do think that there needs to be a separation there sometimes. And we can't always just do the things we, we just love. Yeah. Um, you know, um, so I think it's definitely worth considering that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Such good advice. So let's talk about the current situation because it's like the elephant <laughs> in the room. I mean, how, how is that? How are you feeling about that? Nick? Yeah, I, I, um, it's been really difficult. Mm. Um, I think it's really, we can't escape from that. And, you know, it's great to be positive and I am positive generally, but it has been really, really hard because for me, I've seen a business I've built up for 15 years just stop because yeah. of our work is international. So yeah. I, you know, uh, I, I'm getting emails saying basically, you know, if this continues, then the contracts are going to be longer, the pay is going to be less. Mm -hmm. Um, we have to be quarantined for two weeks before we go away and yeah. I mean it's it's ter it's, it's, it's terrifying mm. um and you know when you're reading in the news concert halls in danger of closing mm -hmm. um and my freelance work and the tours I do, yeah it's 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 it is catastrophic for the music industry and I don't yeah. think um I don't think we can dress that up really no but I do think that we can find opportunities yeah. in this mm -hmm. and I do think that actually it does open up doors but they're just going to be different doors and yeah. we just need to look at things a little bit differently yeah um, and I, I think for me actually it's funny not having the financial pressure because that's gone you know at the moment we can't really you know I can't play a, a concert to a concert hall and get paid for it I yeah can't do that yeah. So actually it's given me time to really assess what's really important to me, throwing myself into projects that aren't reliant on learning money because that yeah. obstacle has been removed for a while. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's going to be really different. Um, I think, you know, I mean, concert halls are opening up in other parts of Europe now. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, the first concerts have happened. So yeah. it's not going to last forever. No. Um, but 
I think we need to be realistic too. And I think that's why it's more important than ever for musicians to diversify as much as possible. Yeah. So yeah. when it does come back, that's brilliant. And then we can actually really objectively see, okay, if this works, come back. Do I really want it? Because you, I don't have to, because I've used this time to build up all these other skills, yeah. which I could transfer into another, another uh, career if I wanted to. Yeah. But then if I really want this, then it, it's there. And it, it's a bit like me breaking my wrist. You know, you can, you can just go through that evaluation process, yeah. look outside the box, look at different things. And if at the end you still really want this, then you're probably going to be the one that's going to be successful mm -hmm. because you're going to have to really fight to get it. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, it, we, we just don't know, I think, what the future holds. And But it, there are opportunities, you know, as I said, I would never be running a teacher development course in Antigua yeah. if it wasn't yeah. for this. I wouldn't be talking to you right now if mm -hmm. perhaps if it wasn't for this you know yeah. um and there's definitely been there's definitely been positives as well and yeah you know my yeah. business what will happen to it i don't know um you'd need to look at different things you know and and a different market i've always you know i've considered for a long time maybe turning it into a more of a into a charity getting funding to work mm -hmm. more in care homes and in hospitals and education yeah. projects I've thought about that for years and that's I'm really passionate about doing that but had this happened would I ever have had to really think about that but yeah. now I am so that's a massive possibility yeah and there's not much funding at the moment but one day there will so yeah. just to go through that thought process I think is important mm. yeah yeah I definitely agree I mean it's it's such a difficult time I remember when um sort of um a lot of work started getting cancelled um and I lost you know most of my work and yeah. there was one evening and I just cried not so much for me because I knew that we'd be okay you know we could survive but just for all the musicians that I knew that were losing all this work you know and and the impact that that was going to have um and so yeah like you say we can't gloss over that and be like oh everything's going to be fine because it's not and right now it's not but I think it does give us an opportunity to be creative and think outside the box um, it, it and does. we can choose to to take that opportunity if we want to um, you know and make of it what we will. I think it's true and it's so funny what you were saying about you know just one evening just, just crying I mm. mean I've, I've done that and I was like what is wrong with me I, yeah. I've never felt to be honest I've never felt this low in my life mm. and I don't know what to do about it mm. But I think we've all been through that process at different times yeah. and it's very hard. And like you say, it's not just for ourselves, it's for everybody mm -hmm. else. You know, my husband's got a job, we're fine. We've frozen our mortgage. It's, yeah. You know, we've done what we have to do. Yeah. Other people aren't in as fortunate a position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it, it, is, um, it is very sad, but I think together we, we'll get through it. And I think if people keep talking and being mm -hmm. open to collaborating with other people yeah. and getting rid of the snobbery about what a career in music means definitely then then we can we, we will come out the other side of it yeah yeah definitely and so I mean you've given so much useful advice already but um if someone <laughs> said to you now um you know I'm finishing music college I want to be a freelance musician like what mm -hmm. would be the top fit, top piece of advice that you would give look outside the box as you said look at yourself as a business mm -hmm. not just as a musician there's nothing that annoys me more and someone said it the other day that they made a complete assumption and judgment saying, oh, yeah, of course, as a musician, you, you have to take a vow of poverty. I, and it really annoyed me. I said, like, oh. you do not have no. to do that. No. And I haven't done that. And it's mm -hmm. not because I'm driven by money, but it's because it's just not true. Yeah. This is a career and we have to look at a way to make it a sustainable career. Yeah. And things like that, that sort of fixed mindset about musicians, I think we can, it limits us sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I think don't be limited by what other people think or say. When you're in music college, if your teacher tells you over and over again that you're going to be an orchestral musician, they're not you. Yeah. So don't, don't be scared to challenge that and don't be scared to look beyond it. Um, and don't be scared of what people think, because if you make a success of yourself, they will admire that in the end. And they'll come back to you. And this has happened to me. They'll come back to you years later asking for work. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so don't just just be brave about it and don't feel stuck in a box and ask advice, talk, mm. talk, listen to webinars. Yeah. Take every opportunity for career development. And that's something that us, we don't get as enough of as musicians because mm -hmm. we have to find it ourselves. Yeah. So every opportunity you get, grab it. 
yeah with both hands yeah such good that advice. would be my advice <laughs> yeah no that's brilliant yeah it's really good advice and I think advice that is often not given um and you know needs to be said so thank you yeah um if people want to follow along with your journey do you have a website or social media where can they um find yeah you, you can um, I'm on LinkedIn. That's probably the best way to see currently what I'm doing um, and what I will be doing in the future. Um, I have a Facebook page, which is Hazel Violin. <laughs> yeah. You don't want my pet. Well, you can, you can be my friend and <laughs> personal one as well, but it's just me going for bike rides. So, um, so Hazel Violin. Um, I have a Twitter account as well. I'm not too good at keeping that up to date. Um, my, my duo um, has a website which is Electra Violin Duo um, but probably my Facebook Hazel Violin is the best thing yeah. um, to see what I'm doing various projects I've been involved with over the last few months orchestral projects virtual projects that are yeah. on there yeah um, and LinkedIn it's all there so that's more of the the, uh, the coaching and the development that I'm mm -hmm. doing um, so the more business orientated stuff is on LinkedIn and the more yeah. playing related stuff is on Facebook amazing oh thank you so much this is such a useful conversation and i think we we often forget that we can learn so much from other people's journeys and looking at what other people Absolutely. have done um yeah. so that's my aim for this podcast is to to be able to you know um let other people get a glimpse into freelance musicians journeys and what they've achieved yeah. and so they can see what's possible so um it's possible and I, i'd say like as a as a musician our skills are so transferable yeah and to really just just really believe in that that we have so much naturally that a lot of people don't have and just that method of communication mm -hmm. and our creative thinking just use those to your advantage yeah and you'll be great <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, thank you so much this has been so useful thank you for joining thank you Hannah. it's a pleasure thank to you. talk to you as well so thanks for inviting me <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> so what do you think are you feeling inspired i know i am what was your biggest takeaway from the chat? I'd love to know. Share the episode and your takeaway on social media and tag me at The Freelance Musician on Instagram or at South Wales Pianist on Facebook. Now, after our chat, Hazel asked me to let you know that in November, she will be receiving accreditation as a business and leadership coach. In the meantime, she is building up her client base and is currently offering free coaching. So if you feel you would benefit from this opportunity, I've included her email address in the episode notes. So do get in touch. And if this episode has sparked your interest in pursuing a career as a freelance musician, I am opening up the Freelance Musician Workshop for its second round. And this is your invitation to take part. The workshop is a five-day course that takes place in a private Facebook group and teaches the fundamentals of establishing a successful freelance career. Each day I deliver a live training in the group and you also receive a workbook full of useful resources. The workshop will start on Monday June 15th and you have until Friday June 12th to book your place. There are limited spaces in the workshop and I am currently offering these at a massively discounted rate. So get in touch quickly if you want to reserve your spot. The link to all the info is in the episode notes or you can send an email to info at southwalespianist.co.uk and I will get back to you straight away. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to leave a review and hit subscribe and I can't wait to see you next time for episode number three.